If you've used React recently, the chances are you've used a framework. It's the recommended way to go with building a React project now. The two main ones there were Next.js and Remix. But React Conference 2024, did they just announce that they were killing Remix? Well, not exactly, but also kind of. This is a really huge announcement and it was really unexpected for me when watching this conference. So let's jump in and see what they have to say about it, why this is happening and what this means for you if you were using Remix or if you were using React Router. So to start off here, I'm actually on the react.dev documentation website just to prove there that they literally rely on these frameworks now. It says if you want to build a new app or a new website fully with React, they recommend picking one of the React powered frameworks. And then you've got here Next.js, the one that I like, and Remix, which I also like as well. And as I said now, they may have just announced that they're killing off Remix here. So you might not see Remix in this documentation, but what you might see is React Router. So here is that blog post announcing it all. And they even have a link to the React conference, which I'll try to link down below as well at the exact timestamp that Ryan comes on stage and talks about this. Ryan, if you don't know, is the creator of React Router along with some others and Remix as well. So let's take a look at what is happening here. So as it says here, for nearly four years, they've been working on Remix, a full stack framework built on web standards to help you build better websites and applications. This is essentially why frameworks existed. When we had Create React App, we'd install different packages like React Router and a load of others to help us with data loading and various things. And everyone pretty much came to do it in a fairly standardized way with sort of different method methodologies um, developing over time. But there was always a lot of standardization between one project to another. So a lot of people built their own templates. And these are essentially what turned into frameworks was having that routing and everything built in. So here they say that they essentially started React Router and then they add Remix and its largest dependency was React Router itself. So Remix was a framework built on top of React Router. And as you see here, they have slowly updated React Router along with that to include a lot of Remix's great loading patterns. You'll know this if you've used Create React or React Router, sorry, as if you've updated from version four to version five and version five to version six, it's always felt like a massive rewrite. And it's kind of a joke in the community that there's always a big rewrite with React Router. Hopefully this news actually sort of slows that down. And once we all update to sort of V7, we shouldn't have any major rewrites going forward or at least not major to us. So let's take a look as well. So as it says here, there are millions of projects using React Router, which many of them were built on top of Create React, React App. Back in the day, this was the way to go. You started a React application with Create React App, and then you installed essentially React Router was the go-to one to add that routing into your single page application. As it says here, since Remix has always been effectively React Router the framework, they wanted to create a bridge for all of these React Router projects that were built on Create React App to go over to Remix. Well, it turns out they made that bridge a little too well, specifically with the introduction of their Vite plugin and their single page application mode. They found themselves looking at Remix, then looking at React Router, then looking back at Remix, and they couldn't really tell the meaningful difference. So they've got this meme here. So essentially what they're saying here is once they were started adding all these great features to Remix, they realized they could bring them to React Router and put them in React Router, which was a dependency of Remix. And then they slowly essentially morphed and that Remix layer got smaller and smaller as they added these things to React Router. So why not go with React Router? So we're remixing React Router again. As I mentioned earlier, it feels like React Router always remixes with every major version. Actually, we're doing a little more than that. Remix has always just been a layer on top of React Router. And as I just said there, that layer has been shrinking over time. It's now so small, they're just gonna get rid of it. What we plan to release as Remix V3 is now React Router V7. So this is what I'm on about. They're getting rid of that Remix branding on that framework there and they're migrating it all to React Router V7, which is really incredible. Here we go into a story about the history of React Router as it's been around for 10 years. They just passed the 10 year anniversary of that first commit. As I said, it's an absolutely massive project and it was just, it was one of the, it was the go-to React Router or the routing project that you used back in the day and still is for many people, one of the ones that you will pick alongside those frameworks there. If you're using a V app, you'd probably pick React Router as mentioned earlier. So Ryan and Michael, highly recommend you go and follow those two on Twitter. They're the guys that started it. They've been building and maintaining React Router for a long time. And as it says, it's undergone several major iterations. Then at some point, what they did was they created React Router, the framework remix. So they did this during the pandemic here. And then they actually got bought by Shopify, which is going to help them actively work on this and just provide that funding to keep this updated and keep people working on it there. So as it says there, it's got a team of six engineers now working on React Router and Remix. 
For 10 years, React Routers main, remained one of the most widely used dependencies in the React ecosystem. So here they're showing it's 7.8 million projects alone in GitHub repositories using React Router. And they show that Shopify heavily depends on that as well. Shopify, the ones as I just mentioned, that bought Remix and React Router, or the developers at least, over to it. And as it says here, it's used for building better websites. So while React Router was great, the purpose of Remix was created as it was supposed to be this better way to build websites with React. This is the same for why that you're recommended to use a framework now. As Remix gave you the amazing features that they wanted everyone to take advantage of, this automatic code splitting, simplified data loading, form actions, server actions, simplified pending states, optimistic UI, server rendering, static pre-rendering, and soon React server components that you can get in Next.js as they're in React, they're soon thinking about how they can implement this themselves. But as I said, this is why we use frameworks. It takes away all of the pain of adding all of this ourselves. And you were pretty much gonna do it in a standard way anyway, using some template or something. So this is why frameworks exist. As it says here, in the past, Create React App was that way that we went to bootstrap a React application. It didn't really come with anything besides just how we start a React project. So a lot of tutorials straight away would say, well, just use React Router. This is why a lot of Create React apps are also known as React Router apps because they were so sort of hand in hand. Any blog post, any tutorial, anything you watched on how to build a React application went Create React App, then React Router. These days, Create React App isn't recommended as I just showed you in that React documentation site. You're not supposed to use it anymore and it's been sunset for a while now. As it shows there, the last one was June 14th, 2023. There are no more updates to that repository. And as it says here, the React docs don't recommend using it. Now, one possible replacement for all of this was V, and I've actually done a video on how to start a React App in 2024, where I showed you just going the V way without using a framework. So as it says here, V has risen substantially in popularity. It's just a really fast way to build your React application, and it has loads of plugins to make it work with everything. As it says here, it provides a really good default React starter, sort of without those framework pieces, and many have used it as the Create React replacement. It didn't really provide that solution for the routing though. As we said, everyone would still go and install something like React Router. And it shows here the Vite team even prefer the Create React replacement to come from someone else other than Vite, as that's not what they're mainly focused on. They want someone who's deep in the React community to build this Create React replacement, but still have it be built on top of Vite there. So here it's showing this is the Create React app downloads versus Vite downloads. So you can see Vite is actually overtaken now. And I mean, it's kind of scary how popular React script still is when it's sunset, but it just shows you how many legacy projects are out there that still rely on these kinds of things. And then slowly, Remix started to use V. As it says here, last fall, they decided to bet on V and they started deprecating their classic compiler. It was always said that Remix was essentially React Router with its own compiler. It was a bit more than that, obviously, but that's how it sort of felt. But then they decided to make the switch to V here. Now that enabled them to add some really cool things like the single page application mode and a load of other stuff. And it meant a load of V plugins and stuff started working with Remix as well. So this is when it started to feel truly like that Create React app replacement that a lot of people wanted, something that felt a bit more simple and that's what this single page application mode I think really helped with was we didn't need to mount work like you don't need to think about all of the server side stuff and anything of that if you want you can just use the single page application mode and just ship all of your code to the front end in a static application there so this was the best bridge they could possibly do to convince devs with the react, react router apps to migrate to remix adding this vite in and everything to take advantage of all of those really good features because you can still use things like client loaders and as it says here client data to build a better single page application than you can without sort of react router and different things so after all what at this point was remix but react router and v so it shows there so Remix has turned into V plus React Router. So this is where they start thinking about the name change there. Now, I relate to this blog post so much in this bit here, as it shows you here when they said that React Router plus V is Remix. How do we convince devs that they need to migrate over to Remix then to get all of these really good features? Whereas it says here, there's a load of problems with that. Their strategy up till now was to make that bridge from React Router app to Remix so seamless it didn't feel like a migration. But from everyone's experience, as you know, if you tell someone to go and switch out a package, it feels like a massive rewrite compared to if we just upgrade a package. If you go to your manager and say, we need to upgrade to the latest version of X package, it's probably a lot easier than saying, let's switch this one out for another one. I've literally run into this before when I've gone into an old project that was Create React App and React Router. I actually updated it to V in the end and was using React Router V6 going from V4. Now that felt like a major rewrite in itself, but it was a lot easier to convince someone that we only need to upgrade the major version than it was to say, hey, 
let's jump ship and use a framework now. So hopefully this like tackles that sort of mental block in a lot of managers' minds of getting them to be able to upgrade and to get people on frameworks. As I said, it really is the best way to build a React application nowadays. So there we go. It turns out they made the Remix React Router bridge a little too well, and Remix and React Router are basically the same thing now, minus that V step. So if they just ship a V plugin for React Router, the two projects could be merged. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to go with React Router plus V is just React Router V7. This means that everyone in the React ecosystem should be able to access that automatic code splitting, simplified data loading, and all of these great features, as I mentioned, that these frameworks bring you. And it's just gonna be a major version upgrade if you're already using V and React Router. That's really awesome and hopefully means so many more projects are gonna be built in way better ways and have access to these awesome features so they can be built in better ways. As you may be having that headache at work that I know I've had before, where you really wanna use a framework with all of these new, shiny, easy to use features, but you can't because it's just so hard to convince a manager or someone that you need to take time out and rewrite everything in that. So hopefully this eases that transition massively. What's next then for React Router and Remix itself? As it says here, the upgrade path is hopefully going to be when they release React Router v7 to just upgrade to the latest minor version of Remix or React Router, enable all of the feature flags, and then all you need to do is change your Remix run dependencies to React Router in your package.json and replace those Remix run imports with React Router. So what's going to happen to that Remix project? Well, essentially, they're going to take a little nap for now. They say they've got a ton of ideas, they're workshopping, and they're eager to get into a new sort of Remix project, so they might still use this Remix namespace to release some cool stuff. But for now, it's going to hibernate, and they're going to put it all into React Router. So React Router v7 is the one you're going to use. There we go. They're killing off Remix and turning it into React Router v7. I really want to know your thoughts on this, so do leave them in the comments down below. Personally, my thoughts are, I think React Router has had this stigma that it's sort of the slow way to do things and you need to be on these frameworks. So I'm really interested to see how this turns out because hopefully we can now convince a lot of people that React Router is still a great option and v7 just makes it the ultimate option for anyone upgrading previous apps such as Create React app, React Router apps to go to a framework. Hopefully it makes that transition way easier for people to accept and way easier for people to do. As, as I said earlier, it means everyone can start using really great features of React apps to make their React apps better and have a better developer experience as well as a lot of these take away the hassle of things you might have had to do manually in the code. Please subscribe for more great content like this. Hopefully I'll do a tutorial when React Router v7 drops on how we can use everything that's new in it and how we can actually build a new application with it. Thank you very much for watching.